welcome back to Historic Tahlequah. Now, Beverly, you mm -hmm. came in 1975. Mm -hmm. Tell us who was president at that time and some of the things that you did, and then kind mm -hmm. of lead us on into what we see at a bank today. Sure, sure. Uh, Ross Swimmer was uh, the president at that time. Uh, Peter Manhart was the chairman of the board. Uh, Mr. Manhart had just acquired the bank just prior to my coming in 1975. Um, and some of the, the board of directors that, that many of our uh, community will still know and recognize, Jack Bliss, um, an attorney, Leo Bodie, uh, Maurice Box, Mr. Crew, Robert Crew, which you mentioned earlier, W.C. Feltz, yes. um, uh, who is, everyone will recognize that name, um, Olivia Jones, Mr. Keeler, uh, Larry Reeser, beloved mm -hmm. uh, board member, Champ Stoss, um, Henry Vance, uh, W.P. Willis, all were board members at that time. One of the first things that you had to do as you were uh, brought on board is you had to go to the boardroom and know the max the pictures with the name so that when th uh, these individuals uh, came into our bank for service, uh, they were treated with, with the respect deserving of a board of director. Well, yes, certainly. Mm -hmm. And all of those uh, gentlemen and the lady that you have mentioned were representative of the business community, either in the mercantile business or mm -hmm. a, 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 a law mm -hmm. offices. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned Henry Vance, and he was a well-respected attorney and then judge, mm -hmm. judge here. Mm -hmm. uh, so they were prominent members of the business community. And I, what did you tell me about Olivia Jones? Now, you said... Olivia was um, the wife of... Um, Jim Jones, who went on to be U.S. Senator. Well, mm -hmm. only one woman on the board now. Uh, then. At that time, At that yes. time. At mm -hmm. that time. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we, we want to go talk just a little bit now mm -hmm. about how the bank looks today mm -hmm. and what it looked like in the past. Okay. Uh, what do you see uh, as the, the openness of the interior? Mm -hmm. And uh, we are going to have an opportunity to look at uh, the first safe, mm -hmm. Indian Territory safe, mm -hmm. and then the artwork. I noticed that the artwork is uh, majors on uh, Native American art, and you have lots mm -hmm. of that on display. Mm -hmm. It was important during the, the, um, the renovation, which happened in the mid-'80s, um, to uh, incorporate the the culture of the community. And a lot of the artwork that you see, um, much of it is from local artists. Um, the most prominent, because of the, the large murals that are on the wall, are from, uh, were done by Mr. Guthrie, um, John Guthrie. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. So we'll have an opportunity to uh, mm -hmm. get some pictures of those things. Yes. And the exterior now is, uh, is stone, but in the beginning it was brick, was it not? Well, I came when it was turned to stone, so I don't know what it was prior to that, Beth. <laughs> Young Miss Atkinson. <laughs> it was brick to begin with, and then it became, uh, mm -hmm. then it was, was stone. Mm -hmm. And uh, in that early picture that we're going to look at, uh, there was a cage. Now, there is, a philosophy, is there a philosophy behind the fact that the bank is open now? Is there a specific philosophy that's been spelled out for you all who are presidents of banks? Not particularly. Uh, Mr. Manhart was certainly instrumental in uh, the, the look and the feel uh, and of the bank at that time and what he wanted, it, what he wanted to reflect. And um, the openness of the building is one of the things that we enjoy the most. Um, but no, I, I don't know what his particular uh, thoughts and ideas were behind the, uh, the layout of the bank. But he wanted, uh, he wanted some openness, but he also wanted to retain the level of privacy that customers would need when they came into right. to the bank and to conduct business. And so there are offices that, that mm -hmm. allow that mm -hmm. to take place. Mm -hmm. um, you uh, did not come in as market president, certainly. Mm -hmm. You said you worked in the bookkeeping department. Mm -hmm. uh, have you seen changes through the years in the perspective uh, for women as they climb the corporate ladder? Into oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, when, I, when I came to work in 1975, there were several uh, um, women that held supervisory uh, positions, and then uh, as time progressed, uh, then 
it wasn't uncommon to see uh, women advance into uh, upper management mm -hmm. positions. And uh, Kathy um, Miller Perry yes. uh, is probably one of those uh, women who paved the way for most of us to be able to, uh, to advance in our careers. She was very well respected and, um, and Mr. Manhart, Mr. Swimmer, uh, both um, contributed to the advancement of careers of women. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, the same thing uh, was prevalent in the teaching profession. Women were classroom teachers and generally in the lower grades in the very early days of, mm -hmm. of that profession. And we always said in the teaching profession that you had to work twice as hard as a man in order to, <laughs> to rise into an administrative position. I don't know whether the men would agree with that or not, but I think it's a welcome, welcome change. And um, well, there were many men who certainly contributed to my education, and I have a fondness for that were very willing to uh, invest in my knowledge. And um, uh, I will always remember the contribution that they and impact that they had on me personally. And that's good. There have always been men who wanted to see women uh, be able to use all their capabilities mm -hmm. and give to uh, the community mm -hmm. and. Uh, it didn't matter that no. they were a woman. It was no. their abilities and their they had, life. They had daughters. They had daughters. And that was a motivation. That was a motivation. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, indeed. Okay, Beverly, explain mm -hmm. this uh, picture, a postcard in 1950. Okay, the postcard was was given to me by a family member who had uh, who had passed away, and it, it's a Happy New Year card dated in 1950, and it shows the the vault door. Um, and at the time, st certainly state of the art for a bank, um, and it is the vault that we still utilize still use. today. Mm -hmm. And I see in this picture D.O. Scott and H.B. Mm -hmm. Upton yes. and Janie Lemons. Yes, and Liddell Johnson is in here somewhere. I just don't know which of those ladies. And they were all is. working in the bank in, in 1950. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Well, Beverly, this has just been so wonderful to have you here to talk about. First National Bank, which started as Bank of Telqua, and uh, we're going to uh, look at some of the artwork, which mm -hmm. you said came in during the Russell and Peter Manhart mm -hmm. uh, era, and uh, uh, perhaps some old pictures, too, okay. uh, that will be used as overlays for this uh, this presentation of Historic Telqua. It's just been a real pleasure for me to have uh, Market President Beverly Atkinson as guest today in Bank of America, which started in 1855 in Stapler's store in the middle of uh, the 100 block of South Muskogee of Tahlequah Indian Territory. Now one of the most thriving uh, and forward-looking communities in Oklahoma because of people such as Beverly and those pioneers who paved the way for Tahlequah to become the city it is now at this time.